Welcome students. Welcome to your English class. Our life is a journey filled with situations where we have to make choices. Whether it is a simple life, simple daily life situations or the turning points in your life. We have we are filled with or we have different choices in front of us. And often we are in a dilemma or confusion to choose one among them. For example, in your daily life, when you go to take a new dress, they spread different colored dresses in front of you, and you face a difficulty in selecting one. Whether you go to take go to uh, eat an ice cream, you have different flavors there. Again, you are in a dilemma to make or make a decision or take a choice. So here today we are going to learn a poem, "The Road Not Taken," written by Robert Frost. In this poem also, the poet tells us about the choices in our life, and he tells he wants to tell us that these choices decide our future or shape our future. The decisions we make in our life influence our future. This poem. The road not taken is written by an American poet Robert Frost. He is well known for simple ideas, but the end of the poem will definitely have a deep thought in it. This poem, The Road Not Taken, was first published in the year 1916. Let us have a look at the summary of the poem. The poem tells us about the journey of our life and the choices we have to make in our life the poet is standing in a forest in a wood or in a forest where he reaches a point where the road divides into two or splits into two there he has to make a choice he has to decide to travel through one road he feels really sorry that he is not able to travel through both the roads he stood there for a long time debating over the choices in front of him and at last he realizes that he can travel through only one route so he stood there for a long time decides to take one route and he looks at both the roads and he feels that the second route has a better claim can provide him with a better opportunity in his life and then he decides to take the second route with an intention to travel to the first one on some other day but again he realizes that it is not possible as one way leads on to another then as he decides to travel to the second one he feels that that will definitely make a lot of difference in his life so dear children the choices in front of our of us are like this if the if we make a wise decision if we are careful in making our choices definitely it will it will lead us to a successful life if the choice we have made is a wrong one definitely we will regret in our life this is what the poet wants to convey through this poem the road not taken let's read the poem now two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry i could not travel good and being a traveler long i stood and looked down one as far as i could to where it bent in the undergrowth so two roads diverged in a yellow wood so the poet is traveling through a forest wood means forest as the poet is traveling he reaches a point in the forest where the road splits into two diverged means split divide into two now what is yellow wood why does the poet call the wood the forest as yellow wood because it was autumn season it was autumn season and all the leaves all the leaves on the trees have turned yellow due to autumn season so the wood is wood means a forest forest which is thickly covered by trees isn't it so all the trees all the trees in the forest all the leaves on the trees in the forest have turned yellow in color so the whole forest looked yellow so the forest so the poet calls that yellow wood so two roads diverged in a yellow wood so the poet is in the middle of the forest where the road splits into two now he has to 
make a decision, isn't it? And sorry, I could not travel both. He feels sorry that he is not able to travel through both the roads at the same time. And sorry, I could not travel both. And we were traveler long I stood. I was, he was a long traveler. He was traveling alone, isn't it? Long traveler. Being alone, he could not ask suggestions also to anyone which road he should take or which, uh, uh, through which uh, road, whether the first one or the second one he should travel. So, he stood there for a long time debating over the choices. He was thinking, he was debating over the two choices in front of him. So, he stood there for a long time debating over the choices and looked on one as far as I could and he looked down at one of the roads. He looked at one of the roads as far as he could see. His eyes could follow, right? To where it went in the undergrowth. So, he looked at the first road as far as he could see and to where it bent in the undergrowth. So the road was turning at a certain point, the point where the road was turning to the other side. So he could not see beyond that because that part was covered by undergrowth. Undergrowth means thick bushes which cover, which stands under the taller trees in the forest. That is called as undergrowth. So he looked at one of the roads or he took, looked at the first road as far as he could see and the road turns at a certain point and from there he could not see the road beyond because it was covered by undergrowth that is dense or thick bushes which exists or which covers the some areas in the forest. Then to the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted bare, though as though that the passing there had worn them really about the same. In this second stanza also, we can feel the confusion or the dilemma that, that the poet is going through. Then took the other just as fair. Then he looked at the second road, which is as just as fair. Fair means good. Just as fair as the first one. So when he looked at the second road, the poet feels that that road is as good as the first one. And having perhaps the better claim, and he feels that it has a better claim. It can provide him with the better opportunities in his life. It can provide him with better opportunities in his life. Because, and why did he feel so? Because it was grassy and wanted bare. Grassy means it was full of grass, fresh grass. You can see fresh grass on the road there. And it wanted bare. Wanted bare means it had not been used. It has to be, has yet to be used. It has not been used by anyone. So there the poet feels that the second road is as good as the first one. Perhaps it has a better claim and it has to be used yet. Okay. But see the next two lines there. Though as for that the passing there had more than really about the same. But actually both the roads had been equally used by the people who have gone through that road. Passing there means the people who have passed through that road. The people who had travelled through that road had equally used, both the roads were equally used, had worn means had used, okay, both the roads were actually equally used by the people who had travelled through that road. But the poet feels that the second road is less travelled or less used and it has a better claim, it can provide him with a better opportunity. Let's move on to the third stanza. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to me, I doubted if I should ever come back. And both that morning equally lay. So, on that particular morning, when the poet was standing in front of both the roads, he feels that on that morning, equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. So, on that particular morning, both the roads were covered with leaves leaves which had fallen down from the trees. No step had total black. That means no one has passed through that road on those roads on that particular morning. Okay. So on that particular morning both the roads were covered with leaves through on which no one has trodden or no one has stepped. Total black means total means to walk over it. Okay. To crush by walking over something is called as Trodden. So, trodden black. So, what will happen when you travel, when you continuously walk through the leaves which had fallen on the road? It will turn black. 
black, isn't it? So trodden black. No one has travelled on that particular morning through those roads, and all the leaves were, were lying there on the road, and no one has crushed them. No one has stepped on the leaves which were lying there on the road, right? Oh, I kept the first for another day. So he says, oh. I kept the first road for another day. So I felt that the second one has a better claim for me. And I kept the first for some other day. Oh, I kept the one for another day. So I will travel to the first one on some other day. Now I have decided to travel to the second road. So he has made a decision now. He has decided to travel to the second road. Yet knowing how way leads on today, I know very well that one way will lead me to another. Isn't it? One way will lead me to another. I doubted if I should ever come back. I know very well that one way will lead on to another. And I doubted whether I will be able to come back and travel to the first one. So the poet doubts whether he will be able to come back and travel to the first one. Still, he decided to travel to the second one. Hoping that he would be able to travel to the first one on some other day. I shall be telling this with a sign. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. This is the last stanza of the poem. I shall be telling this with a sign. So the poet says, I shall be telling this after many years, I shall be telling this again with a sign. Sign means what is sign? Take a deep breath. Isn't it? When do you take a deep breath? When you are relaxed after doing something, you take a deep breath. When you are in grief, you take a deep breath. And when you regret something, you take a deep breath. Isn't it? So, here with this sign, he says that the poet says that he shall be telling this again. Okay? After some years with a sign. Then, somewhere ages and ages hence, that is after some years in the future. Right? Two roads diverged in a wood. Again he says, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. So there he gives, in, uh, there he gives more uh, stress on the word I. I, because he has taken the decision, isn't it? He is the one who has decided. Then I took the one less traveled by. So I was the one who took the road which was less traveled by people. I was ready to face a risk. Uh, I was ready to face the risk of the challenges that the road or that the path could offer me. I was ready to face it. I was the one who has taken the decision. I took the one which was less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. And that my decision has made a lot of difference in my life. So he says, after some years, maybe in the future, I shall be, I may be telling this with a sigh. I may be telling this with a sigh, deep breath. So, <coughs> feels from this from this stanza we could make out that maybe the poet is regretting his choice because he says I shall be telling this with a sigh deep breath when you when do you take a deep breath when you are relaxed or when you are in grief or when you regret things so here the poet says that maybe he may regret his regret about the decision that he has taken isn't it so I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence it is in the future that two roads, once two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less travelled by and that has made all the difference in my life. The poem is about making choices. These choices shape our future. The poet describes his feelings after making or about making the choices in his life. He says that the choices we make or the decisions we take in our life have a great impact on us. It influences our future. As I told you earlier, if the choice we make is wise, wise one, then we will be happy in our life and we will be successful also. But if, we, if the choice we make is a wrong one, we will, be, we will regret it. The message, let us look at the message of the poem. The poem hold, holds out that our life is a continuous journey full of divergence now and then. The important thing is to move on without looking back. But we have to take a decision. We have to make a 
choice and this choice or the path we choose will lead us to our destination. Let us look at the poetic devices used by the poet in this poem. First look at the symbolism. The road. The road symbolizes the choices in our life. The choice which shapes our future, which influences our future, which decides our future. So the road in this poem symbol is a symbol of the choices we take in our life, the decisions we take in our life and the path we choose to move forward. That is what the road symbolizes in this poem. Second one is morning. Morning, a bright morning, isn't it? It represents, okay, the bright morning represents a new beginning in the poet's life. Okay, and the endless possibilities the life has ahead of him. Okay, then as, as I told you, morning, the bright morning is, uh, is a new beginning in the poet's life. Okay, and the new beginning also reveals that the poet is in the early stages of his life. And his life is spread out before him. So, there is hope everything, isn't it? When there is a new beginning, you have a lot of hope. And you start your journey with a lot of hope. And the third one is the wood, yellow wood. So, the color yellow, it represents hope, light and promise in the speaker. That is in the poet's life. The poet is standing there in the yellow wood. That is the whole wood is covered with bright yellow color and the whole life stretches before him. And the poetic device is the rhyme scheme. So let us look at the rhyme scheme of the poem. The whole poem has a rhyme scheme that is each stanza of the poem has a rhyme scheme A, B, A, A, B. Then look how it is formed. Look, take the last words from each line of the first stanza. Right? The last word of the first line is good. We can give the give it as A. Then comes both. We take it as B. Then again the third line, the last word of the third line is stood. The sound, isn't it? A. Then could. Again A. And the last one is growth. That we take as B. So the, style, the rhyme scheme of the each stanza of the poem is A, B, A, A, B. Another poetic device used by the poet is alliteration in the poem. And what is alliteration? When the consonant sounds are repeated in, a, in the same line, when the consonant sounds are repeated at the beginning of the words in the same line, then comes the alliteration. Okay, let's have a look at the examples from the poem. In the third stanza, first sound is repeated, isn't it? First four. Yes? Then in the second stanza, Third sound is repeated. Though as for that the passing there. Isn't it? Though that. Right. And then again in the second stanza, word sound is repeated. Wanted where? Wanted where? So first sound in first four. Then the second stanza, though that. Third sound is repeated. Then again in the second stanza, wanted where? Word sound is repeated. Let us look at what the title of the poem suggests. The title of the poem, The Road Not Taken, isn't it? So the poem is about the choices in our life and we often regret after, the, after making the choices or after taking decisions in our life. But what is once done cannot be undone. And it is human nature that we regret upon what we have denied in our life rather than and we do not we don't uh, that is we don't think about what we have chosen in our life isn't it so it is human nature that whenever whenever we deny something we often think about or regret about what we have denied than thinking about the good times that our choice has given us hence the title the point is given the title the road which is not taken the road not taken let us continue now the poem is about making choices. The poet says that the choices we make in our life influences or impacts, our, it has a great impact on our future because it influences our future. Right? Okay. So when the poem begins, we see that the poet is travelling through a forest 
and he reaches a point where the where the road divides or splits into two. And being a low traveler, he stood there for a long time debating over the choices in front of him or uh, deciding to take. He has to take a decision now, isn't it? He has to take a decision and travel through one of the roads. He looked at one of at the first road for a long time. He and then he looked at the second one. And when he looked at the second one, he feels that the second road has a better claim. It can provide him with a better opportunity because it was less used by people. He feels so. He feels the boy feels that the second road is less used by people. And he decides to face that risky life. In a risky path in front of him. He was ready to face the challenges ahead of him, isn't it? And he decides to travel through the second road. And on that particular morning, both the roads were lying there with full with leaves which had fallen down from the trees, and no one had travelled through those roads on the on that particular morning. And he says he decided to travel through the second one, and also he decided he decided to. He, kept the first one for some other day and he hoped sometimes he will be able to travel to the first one but he doubted it because one way leads to another and he doubted whether he will be able to come back and travel to the first one anyway he decided to travel to the second road and in the last stanza he says that maybe i will be telling this in the future i may be telling this with a sigh maybe i may I, maybe i will regret my decision but anyway i have traveled through it and it has made a lot of difference in my life so my dear children we often all of us isn't it our life is a journey and all of us face such situations in our life so what we have to do is we have to be very wise and careful in making decisions because the decisions we take in our life decides our future. It has a great impact on our future. So hope you all will be wise and careful in taking decisions in your life. That is the message of the poem. Thank you dear children for listening.